The Great Pyramids of Giza Undoubtedly some of the most incredible ancient monuments to be found anywhere on Earth. Just how old are these structures? 4,000 years? 10,000 years? 100,000 years? We recently uncovered the astonishing megalithic blocks once exposed upon the east side of Cheops. Blocks which indicate that the entire skeletal structure of the pyramid is actually made with blocks similar to those found at Baalbek. 100 plus ton blocks, revealed at some point within antiquity, most likely done by a jealous ruler in an attempt to destroy and conceal the evidence of this past, more capable civilizations were. Additionally, humans are curious creatures. Not only do we now suspect that destructive phases have befallen the great structure throughout its long life on Earth, but also, like we do today, has also before experienced being marveled at, and conservation efforts in the form of more modern casting stones have been installed. These blocks, initially obstructing our view of the seemingly impossible blocks which make up its inner structure. Is there any proof to support such claims of an enormous age to be found anywhere else on Earth? Peru, a place which contains the same uncannily designed impossible pre-Incan architecture. Within the Supi Valley, some 120 miles north of Lima, is the Pyramid of Caral. Now claimed to be the oldest pyramid on Earth, and the clear erosion which it has experienced clearly makes it an obvious candidate for this title of incredible antiquity, once towering into the heavens, now virtually leveled by erosion over many, many millennia. This site has clearly received no later attention by a capable or interested civilization, left to rot with the overgrown mountains of Peru. Yet it possesses such similarities in architecture with ancient Mesopotamia, China, India, and indeed Egypt, is it now so unforgivable to suspect that all of these structures were actually built by the same civilization at the same time within history? The only difference being that the well-known and documented Egyptian civilization later moved in on the specific pyramidal structures of Giza for power purposes, while the Inca focused in on the ancient architectural land terracing. Interestingly, and yet more compelling, evidence supports previous hypotheses here on the channel. When Paul Kosak discovered Corral in 1948, it received little attention because it appeared to lack any historical artifacts, an unusual absence of any habitational evidence usually sought at archaeological sites. Could this be due to the sheer age of these monuments? that all but the remaining gigantic stones has simply eroded away? Corral is not the only pyramid to be found within Peru. There are many more which share the same evidence of great age. Near the city of Saipan is the largest pyramid concentration in Southern America, known as the Pyramids of Tucumi, or the Valley of the Pyramids. It has no less than three pyramid cities, which together have a stunning total of 250 pyramids. Tucumi lies on the southern margin of the valley and is surrounded by fertile agricultural land, thanks to the Tami Canal, which brings water northwards from the Chankay River, a perfect strategic location for a once flourishing civilization. Who were these people? When did they live? Thanks to ongoing research, not only is the officially upheld story surrounding such cities crumbling, but we are now getting closer and closer to finally answering these questions. When an ancient ruin is academically studied, it will often be attributed as the work of a far more recent, already studied, thus previously permitted group placed within known history, often a group simply incapable of such undertakings. Furthermore, not only do many sites hold evidence of a far older yet far more advanced builder having once been responsible for their construction, but such sites can often share characteristics with ancient ruins found far away, features from a said site also found on another continent on the other side of the globe. 
False doors, for example, found over countless ancient ruins spanning much of the world. This reoccurrence, along with many other similar signature features, are far from mere coincidence and can only be explained by a past, intercontinental, highly capable lost civilization, as we have postulated in the past in regards to many factors indicative of their megalithic legacy. Metal clamps, identified on differing continents, varying in style and composition relative to what was presumably readily available, so although they differ in style, the knowledge of how to create and use such ancient technology had clearly been the work of the same civilization. The pyramids of Uymir, for example, are six rectangular pyramids you would more than likely have never heard of and most certainly would not have been taught of their existence by modern mainstream academia. Built from lava stone without the use of mortar, they are uncannily reminiscent of many structures within the South Americas. They are located in the districts of Chacona, part of the town of Uymer, on the island of Tenerife in the Canary Islands, Spain. The structures have been attempted to be dismissed as nothing but 19th century buildings, argued as the byproduct of contemporary agricultural techniques. Yet their infamous shape and the signature building techniques incorporated into said structures are undeniably found elsewhere on Earth. Other pyramids employing the same methods and materials of construction can be found in various sites on Tenerife. In Uymer itself, there were nine pyramids, any yet, regardless of academics attesting to them being no more than a century old. Only six of the pyramids survive to this day. In 1990, adventurer and publisher Thor Heyerdahl became aware of the Canarian pyramids by reading an article written by Francisco Pedron in the Tenerife newspaper Dario de Avisos, detailing the quote, real pyramids of the Canaries. As Heyerdahl had hypothesized a transatlantic link between Egypt and Central America, which is a subtle way of saying a now lost yet once global superpower who once ruled the waves, he became intrigued by the Uymer pyramids and relocated to Tenerife. Heyerdahl hypothesized that the Canarian pyramids formed a temporal and geographical stopping point on voyages between ancient Egypt and the so-called Mayan civilization's ruins, a claim we agree with. Yet we posit that this contact was not between the Egyptians and Mayans, but was one and the same force, a far older, now lost, world-conquering civilization, an ingenious group who not only passed on their wisdom to every corner of the world, but even built in ways we are yet to understand. Unexplainable anomalies litter many ancient ruins to this day. Heyerdahl had predictably initiated a controversy with historians, esoterics, archaeologists, astronomers. Most of mainstream academia staunchly oppose such claims. By suggesting such an hypothesis, which flies in the face of already established paradigms, his research was predictably never pursued further than Heyerdahl personally took it. Yet I feel he succeeded in publishing a ruthlessly honest opinion in regards to the ruins, regardless of what was already apparently established as fact. And along with our research within Bosda Caves, and the similarities, differentiations, and other investigative strategies utilized to support such an argument of a now-lost world-going super-civilization, we feel the evidence for our case is now all but overwhelming. There are far too many connecting factors to simply claim coincidence, and as the proof of this past civilization's capabilities becomes more apparent and in turn researched, the closer we become to finally finding these now lost ancestors. It is a pursuit for the truth, which we find highly compelling. Fort Ransom is a small place within the state of North Dakota, USA, that may hold an enormous yet quietly held secret. In this small slice of the rural farming lands of the United States lies a place known as Pyramid Hill, a small, modest pyramidal mound, which is very similar in shape and size to the curious pyramidal mound found in other parts of the world, such as Silbury Hill, a chalk pyramid within the UK. Long argued by a number of funded geologists 
as a mere natural formation. However, local residents, along with historical accounts within the area, have strongly disagreed with these conclusions, since their predictable acceptance by the academic community. A vast portion of the surrounding population believe, including a number of specialist historians and archaeologists, that Pyramid Hill is in fact that of a man-made pyramid. What's more, they hold to the belief that it is the oldest pyramidal structure on Earth. What makes this site the most interesting, we feel, however, and the reason for this video, is the writing stone which was found nearby some centuries ago. Clearly very ancient cup and ring marks, and constructed to form some kind of communication. They have, however, remained undeciphered. They are incredibly intriguing, and are reminiscent of a hybrid between music and Morse code. Yet all attempts to establish a translation of the pattern have been unsuccessful. Located in the Cheyenne River Valley, in southeastern North Dakota, pitted mysteriously cup and ring marked boulders appear in Saskatchewan, South Dakota, Iowa, and many other sites all over the world. Just who created them remains a mystery. Was the writing stone left by the original builders of Pyramid Hill? If so, why is it an unknown language? Who wrote it? Is Pyramid Hill really the oldest pyramid on Earth? Built by an unknown culture who clearly spoke and wrote a highly complex and as yet undecipherable language? Perhaps one day we will find out the truth. In 1917, an amazing find was made in Indonesia. Entered into the report of the Department of Antiquities, the Dutch historian N.J. Chrome also mentioned it in 1949. Employees of the National Archaeology Research Center visited the site in 1979 for a study of its archaeology, history, and geology. If the claims are proven accurate, Indonesia possesses the oldest pyramidic structure on the face of the Earth. Buried under a mound of ancient sediment. Located around 800 meters above sea level, the site covers a hill in a series of terraces bordered by retaining walls of stone, and is covered with massive rectangular stones of volcanic origin. The Sundanese people considered the site sacred, believing it was the result of the legend of King Siluangi's attempts to build a palace in one night. Based on various dating techniques, the site has an official dating for completion by 5000 BC and quite likely much earlier. This pyramid is very old indeed. Interestingly the Lakan mountain in Borneo or rather, what the natives and tourists alike have known as a mountain for millennia, has also recently been confirmed to actually be an ancient pyramid. Drill samples from the tops of these mounds have provided carbon dates going as far back as 20,000 BC, the deeper they drilled the older the carbon dates became, peaking out at a layer of not local basalt at 90 feet. In West Java ancient knowledge had successfully been retained, indigenous communities claimed Egyptians landed, and even colonized Indonesia well before 2000 BC. The evidence for the colonization of Indonesia by the ancient Egyptians, is documented by Sir Thomas Stamford Raffles, in his volume, The History of Javam, 1830. Tomb paintings and writings show that the Egyptians were trading down the Red Sea and into the Indian Ocean. Were these structures actually created by Egyptians? Why were they placed where they lay? As I have mentioned before we know an awful lot about the Egyptian civilization, a lot of our knowledge from what they left us in written language, scrawled and hieroglyph all over these ancient monuments, we know about mummification processes in detail, we know all about their religious rituals, death practices etc, yet, alas, not one shred of writing on how they constructed such awe inspiring tombs, or why make them in the shape of a pyramid, out of millions of tons of accurately placed stone. Did the Egyptians just claim these structures as their own, as an illusionary appearance of power? A drought killed the ancient Egyptians, yet their supposed sphinxes show evidence of submersion, and thousands of years of heavy rainfall, this points a logical finger at an earlier creation date. With modern technologies, testing equipment, penetrating radar, and the internet, it appears the truth of who we really are, and who our ancestors were, may be revealed to us all. We recently shared the astonishing discovery of a colossal ancient pyramid, Cholula. Not only the largest ancient pyramid, believed to have ever been found on Earth, 
but also the biggest ancient structure ever found, just like that of the Bosnian Pyramid, long assumed a mound of peculiar shape. This truly huge structure was buried under often meters of fertile earth. Some claim it was buried to conceal it from invaders, such as David Carballo, an archaeologist at Boston University, who explained to BBC Future, quote, it was abandoned sometime in the 7th or 8th century CE. The Chilateca had a newer pyramid temple located nearby, which the Spaniards destroyed." End quote. While geologists argue that over the centuries, or indeed millennia it has stood, the mud bricks its exterior was created from have fertilized and naturally grown over this huge structure, earth which still hides much of its stature from the world to this day. Yet, this makes the discovery no less of interest. If anything, it makes it all the more intriguing. Why not fully excavate the site? Are there things being hidden there? What was the purpose of such an astonishing building being made? Was it as a tribute to a deity? Or are we looking at an enormous tomb? Like the claims that circle Giza's three great structures year upon year. Are their treasures still buried beneath, just waiting to be found? Interestingly, there does indeed exist an underworld labyrinth beneath this great site. An entire town-sized maze of ancient tunnels, littered beneath the site, again a feature akin to Giza. Yet any mention of sarcophagi, treasures, tombs, or any other interesting discoveries, local archaeologists remain curiously silent, regardless of this structure's clear past importance. According to Geophys, the adobe brick pyramid stands 55 meters or 180 feet above the surrounding plain, far shorter than the 137 meters or 449 feet of the Great Pyramid Cheops in Giza but also much wider, measuring 450 by 450 meters, or 1480 by 1480 feet, versus Cheops at 230 by 230 meters, or 750 by 750 feet. Yet we must not forget to mention the astonishing precision present within Giza, seemingly absent this nonetheless gigantic structure, which we find highly compelling.
Hi guys, so today I wanted to share with you an amazing story. It's about a very bright 15 year old young lad named William Godori. He has found something archaeologists have missed for centuries. The young lad often wondered why Mayan cities were not located near rivers and seemed to be randomly plotted. This is where the boy made a miraculous discovery. He realized that the ancient ruins aligned with star constellations above and by using Google Earth, he managed to match up 117 ancient Mayan ruins with star constellations. Even discovering a set of three stars the Mayans clearly held in high regards that we were unaware of previously. I did not understand why the Maya built their cities away from rivers, on marginal lands and in the mountains, Godori told French Canadian magazine Journal de Montreal. They had to have another reason. And as they worshipped the stars, the idea came to me to verify my hypothesis. I was really surprised and excited when I realized that the most brilliant stars of the constellations match the largest Maya cities. By plotting these star locations, William has seemingly discovered the ruins of a very ancient pyramid, accompanied by a city in ruins, untouched by humans for over a thousand years. As Daniel Delisle from the Canadian Space Agency told Samuel Osborne at The Independent, the satellite images revealed certain linear features on the forest floor that looked anything but natural. There are enough items to suggest it could be a man-made structure, he said. Godori has tentatively named the lost city Kaakchi, meaning fire mouth, and will be working with researchers from the Canadian Space Agency to get his discovery published in a peer-reviewed journal. He'll also be presenting his findings at Brazil's International Science Fair in 2017. However, in a strange development, a scientist, supposedly, quote, familiar with this Mexican region where the odd city-like features have been discovered, says at least one of them is an abandoned cornfield. How he knows this is unknown. We visited them and my grad students know them quite well. Anthropologist Joffrey E. Braswell from the University of California, San Diego's Mesoamerican Archaeology Laboratory told George Dvorsky at Gizmodo. Whether this is an attempt at concealing the finds from the public is unknown, but it is sure to put a halt to a public disclosure of all of Godori's finds at Brazil's science fair. There are indeed confirmed lost Mayan cities in this region, two only being discovered last year. One was a completely new find, while the other was a rediscovery, a confirmation of reports of its existence. With the young man coming up with such a compelling theory, complete with confirmed hypothesis and ruins being confirmed as dotting the 1800 square mile region of jungle, you have to wonder how specialists can shrug such positive leads off from such a bright young person without further investigation, whether withheld from public scrutiny or not. As always, thanks for watching guys, take care.